Hello, my name is Dr. Gita Ganesh, and the title of my presentation is COVID-19 Vaccinations and Multiple Sclerosis. This presentation was last updated on February 27, 2021. At the time of this presentation, three COVID-19 vaccines have been approved for emergency use in the United States. I have no financial disclosures. The objectives for this presentation are as follows to provide a general overview of COVID-19 and its symptoms, describe COVID-19 severity for people with multiple sclerosis, and discuss the National MS Society's recommendations as of February 27, 2021. Coronavirus disease 19, also called COVID-19, is an infectious disease caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, also called SARS-CoV-2. The first case was reported in Wuhan, China in December 2019. The infectious disease is considered a pandemic, with only a small number of countries in the world reporting zero cases as of February 2021. On February 26, 2021, Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center reported the following. Over 113 million global confirmed cases, over 2,500,000 global confirmed deaths, close to 28,500,000 confirmed cases in the U.S., and greater than 500,000 deaths have been associated with COVID-19 in the U.S. Many symptoms have been attributed to COVID-19, including fevers or chills, cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, muscle aches, headache, loss of taste or smell, sore throat, runny nose, and diarrhea. The majority of people develop mild to moderate symptoms. Severe symptoms include hypoxia. Critical symptoms include multi-organ failure and shock. A severe case is defined as hospitalization, admission to the ICU, intubation or mechanical ventilation, and death. Several registries across the U.S. and the world have monitored COVID-19 symptoms in patients with MS. Having MS does not put a person at greater risk for contracting COVID-19 or having a severe case. As stated by the National MS Society, the following groups of people may be more susceptible to a severe case of COVID. Having a progressive form of MS, people with MS over the age of 60, men with MS, black people with MS and possibly South Asian people with MS, patients with higher levels of disability, usually those that require some form of assistance to walk, people with MS and obesity, diabetes, or diseases of the heart or lungs, and people with MS on certain disease-modifying therapies. Based on reported cases, there is evidence that some disease-modifying therapies can impact the severity of COVID-19. Interferons and glutaramer acetate are unlikely to have a negative impact on COVID-19. Dimethylfumarate, deroxymelfumarate, teraflunamide, fingolimod, natalizumab, ozanamod, and saponamod are not associated with an increased risk of more severe COVID-19 symptoms. Ocrelizumab and rituximab have been associated with more severe COVID-19 symptoms. At this time, there is not enough data to draw a conclusion about the impact of alemtuzumab or cladribine. We are going to shift gears and discuss COVID-19 vaccines and how they impact people with MS. At this time, two types of vaccines have been approved for emergency use in the United States. Messenger RNA vaccines are not live virus vaccines. They teach our cells how to make a protein that triggers an immune response in our body. Messenger RNA vaccines never enter the nucleus of a cell and do not interact with our DNA. Our cells break down the messenger RNA once it reads the messenger RNA. In viral vector vaccines, genetic material from the COVID-19 virus is inserted into a weakened live virus, such as a human adenovirus. The vector enters our cells and delivers genetic material that instructs our cells to make copies of a viral protein found on the coronavirus. When the viral protein is expressed on the surface of our cells, the immune system recognizes the proteins as foreign and creates antibodies. Viral vector vaccines cannot cause infection with COVID-19 or the virus used as the vaccine vector. The genetic material delivered by the vector does not integrate into our DNA. 
Protein subunit vaccines against COVID-19 are not currently authorized for emergency use in the U.S. They contain a virus protein that stimulates an immune response. There are two messenger RNA vaccines currently approved for emergency use in the U.S. The Pfizer BioNTech vaccine was the first approved vaccine. This vaccine encodes part of the spike protein found on the surface of the virus. It is injected into the upper arm. It is given as a two-dose series separated by 21 days. It is indicated for people ages 16 years and older. It does not contain eggs, preservatives, or latex. In a clinical trial, it was 95% effective at preventing COVID-19 in people not previously infected. It is not recommended for people who have had anaphylactic reactions to any component of the vaccine, for example, polyethylene glycol. The Moderna COVID-19 vaccine is also a messenger RNA vaccine. It also encodes for a part of the spike protein found on the surface of the virus. It is a two-dose series given 28 days apart as an injection. It does not contain egg, preservatives, or latex. It is recommended for people age 18 years and older. In a clinical trial, it was 94.1% effective at preventing COVID-19 in people who have not been infected before. It is not recommended for people with a history of anaphylaxis to any part of the vaccine. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is the third and newest vaccine to be authorized. Unlike the Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna vaccines, it is a viral vector vaccine. A live, weakened human adenovirus acts as a delivery system, delivering SARS-CoV-2 genetic material to a cell. The cell is then instructed to make copies of the viral spike protein. Once the cells display this protein, the immune system creates antibodies and activates white blood cells. Also unlike the two prior vaccines, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a single injection. In a clinical trial, the vaccine was 85% effective in preventing severe COVID-19 across all regions. It is also not recommended for those with a history of anaphylaxis to any part of the vaccine. The National Multiple Sclerosis Society has convened a panel of experts to provide guidance on COVID-19 and COVID-19 vaccines for people living with MS. These guidelines have been endorsed by the Multiple Sclerosis Coalition and several organizations. As of February 27, 2021, the recommendations regarding COVID-19 vaccines specifically apply to the Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna vaccines. Recommendations have been based on data from the vaccine clinical trials and studies on other vaccines administered to patients with MS. We should acknowledge at this time that studies specifically on patients with MS have not been performed yet. Based on the data so far, the Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna vaccines are considered safe for people with MS and safe to use while on disease-modifying therapies. Most people with relapsing and progressive forms of MS should get vaccinated. The timing of the vaccine can depend on what is available to you, how stable your MS is, and what medication you are on. The following list of medications includes interferons, forms of glutarimer acetate, teraflunamide, forms of dimethylfumarate, deroxymelfumarate, and natalizumab. It is recommended that people with MS getting the vaccine not delay the start of these disease-modifying therapies. If you are already taking these medications, there is also no need to adjust the dosing or frequency for the vaccine. Take a moment to see if the particular disease-modifying therapy you are interested in is on this list. For Jelenia, Mazent, and Zaposia, it is ideal to get the second dose of the vaccine four or more weeks before starting these medications. These medications should not be discontinued in order to get the vaccine. Ponvori, the brand name for Panesimod, will be FDA approved soon. It is in the same class as the listed medications and will likely carry the same recommendation. For Lemtrada and Mavenclad, the second dose of the vaccine ideally should be four or more weeks prior to the start of the medication. If you are already on these medications, it would be ideal to get the vaccine no earlier than 12 weeks after the last dose. The most optimal timing is 24 or more weeks after the last dose. 
If you are resuming these medications, it is recommended that you wait four or more weeks after the second dose. For Ocrevus, Rituxan, and Rituximab biosimilars, it is recommended that the second dose be given four or more weeks prior to the start of these medications. If you are already on these medications, consider getting the vaccine 12 or more weeks after the last treatment dose. If you are resuming these medications after the last dose of vaccine, it is recommended that you wait four or more weeks to do so. Kesimpta is a self-injection with a dosing frequency that may interfere with vaccine administration. The injections are given at week zero, one, and two, followed by one injection every four weeks starting at week four. It is recommended that people with MS complete the second dose of the vaccine four or more weeks prior to start. If you are already on the medication, it is ideal to wait four or more weeks after an injection before getting a vaccine. After completing the second dose, it is recommended that you wait four or more weeks to resume key symptom. At this time, there are no official recommendations regarding the Johnson & Johnson vaccine because it was recently authorized on February 26, 2021. As with the other two vaccines, recommendations will be based on clinical trial data and prior vaccines administered to patients with MS. There is no indication at this time that the messenger RNA vaccines will be preferred over viral vector vaccines. Although viral vector vaccines are delivered in a live, weakened virus shell, this virus shell only acts as a delivery system and cannot produce disease. It is reassuring to know that viral vector vaccines do not interfere with our DNA in any way. There is no data to suggest timing of the dose will be different for this vaccine. The recommendations for timing on previous slides will likely apply to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine single dose. It is possible that this single dose vaccine may be more ideal for someone on a medication such as Kesimpta, which requires monthly dosing. People with MS who are experiencing a serious relapse that affects their ability to carry out activities of daily living should wait before considering any vaccine. The recommendation is to wait four to six weeks after the onset of relapse symptoms or wait until symptoms have stabilized. The National MS Society recommends waiting three to five days after the last dose of high dose steroids before obtaining vaccine injections. We hope this presentation helped inform you about COVID-19 vaccinations. Every case is different. Please talk to your healthcare professional if you have any concerns regarding getting vaccinated.